Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about pull requests and some th things, red flags in pull requests that should make you reject that pull request immediately. So let's get into it. So uh, for me, this is uh, there's really only one scenario where like this because the thing is, I mean, every code, piece of code that you write will be a little bit different and very, depending on what the pull request is about, you, I mean, you're always going to read through it, right? And before you accept the pull request to your project, if you're on GitHub or if you're working or something like that, it's just a coworker who's looking for a code review or something like that, you will still want to be able to, you, you, you want to make sure that you understand what's going on, right? So that's, uh, like, let's just make that a soft red flag because I think we can all agree that if you don't understand the code that is, that it, what, what it does, then you should not accept it. That's like signing on the dotted line without having read the contract. You, you should know what's going on, right? And so let's, let, let, let's just call that a soft red flag. But apart from a soft red flag, I would say that there's only one concrete scenario that I know of where we can just, in my world, it's just an immediate thing. It's just directly going to be, I'm not going to accept this until you do this. Because usually it kind of depends you sh as I said, like it depends on the pull request. Sometimes I will let something through even for the, even though it doesn't abide by some of the standards that we have because it's just more pragmatic to let the pull request through. Maybe we have a tight deadline or something isn't like critical to test at that exact moment or something like that. But one thing that I will never, ever, 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 ever allow through because I even, and this is something like I usually allow my coworkers to like to ignore some of the comments that I leave them when I put up co comments on a code review. But there is something that I would never let them, even they are not allowed in my world. Like I will not stand by and let them do that if, uh, even if they think that I'm wrong. And that is to submit a pull request and merge it when they have a complicated function or a complicated piece of logic that is untested. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the complexity that I'm talking about is usually that you have a piece of code that is extremely arcane to understand. You have a piece of code where you might have, let's say for the sake of argument, that you have some bug that you have been working on. There's no clean way to solve this bug and it's specific to one specific customer or something like that. And you have to do all these kind of weird things that you read this code and you kind of immediately as a developer go, why are they doing it this way? Why is this happening? Like you need, and you need to basically go and sit down either like, you know, of course you should have a, have a comment, but if it's not immediately apparent to you as the reader of this software, what this does, and why it does it in this specific way. There are my, like examples are like, there are magic numbers or like one, uh, at one point we are adding 50 and then we are redu reducing by 25 if a specific condition is set. All of these sorts of things where you basically have a piece of uh, a function or something like that where you, you know, you see what's happening. You get like what the, like the function is doing, but you don't understand why it's doing that thing. That, needs to have unit tests. No exceptions. I don't care who you are. That needs to be unit tested. Because the problem with such a function and accept, accepting that without unit test into the code base is that whenever someone needs to change that function, you have, because the function doesn't really, it doesn't really, it's not clear what the intention of this function is. It's not clear, then there's, and there's like, even if you document it, it's not clear what the requirements of this logic is. It's extremely dangerous to change such a function. Uh, or it's, it's even dangerous to just change something that is around the function. It might be that the input causes all kinds of problems. Even worse, it might be state dependent in some fashion that there's some other part of the code that affects the behavior of this function. And I have had 
people commit or try and create pull requests of this nature quite a few times. And I've always said the same thing. I don't care if we're on like a tight schedule or anything. You need to create tests for this because as soon as this gets, it gets into the code base, and you don't like add testing and like all the cases because that's the beautiful part about unit testing these sorts of uh, this sort of code. You are very clearly expressing in each test the requirements. It, the, the unit tests they become almost as in technical specification. It's it it that becomes the the spec for this piece of for this feature, and that's exactly what you want because then you are confident that in for the next person, it's going to be a fairly. It's, it feels secure to know that, all right, I, I'm not really sure how this function is supposed to work, but at the very least, I have a bunch of tests that make sure that even if I add some stuff or I tweak this in a bit, it's still going to comply with the original specification of this logic. Now, another example of a great function to do this for is let's say that you create a search function of some sort and there is you should prioritize and order things in different manner in some complex fashion that's also pure logic that can be extremely complicated depending on what type of dialogue that you have had with your stakeholders because remember when you're writing co a code that is extremely complicated such as this with a lot of technical details where it doesn't really, it's not boilerplate. It's not really apparent to somebody what's going on. I mean, I'm, if you're making a to-do application or like something that you're clicking on some buttons and shit, no, but that's not complicated logic, but searching and filtering data sets and things like that based on a bunch of different parameters is the sort of logic that is very error prone and can go very, can become very problematic very quickly. So that's uh, definitely gonna be my answer. So what I want you to take away from this is that for me, the first warning flag that you should look for in a pull request is: has this is this pull request immediately like is there some obscurity to this? Are are there any any arcane things going on? Something that stands out to you that this I don't really understand what's going on here. I don't really get why we're doing this thing here. And it's like anything with like magic numbers that are just doing something within the code should immediately stand out to you that oh this thing here might actually need a few unit tests. You don't always have to have unit tests for every piece of logic that you write for a program, but this sort of stuff is the sort of stuff that comes back and becomes legacy because if you don't have some type of documentation or some way of asserting that this thing is working the way it should be working, it's just a matter of time before it becomes a legacy type of problem and then nobody is pretty much dares touch it. So make sure that you're looking out for that sort of thing and never let somebody merge something like that without having proper unit testing. Have a great day.